Hello everybody, today I have a very unique fixture to share with all of you. This is a GE201SA. It's one of their area light offerings alongside the power bracket. And there was also an offering of this style for the consumer end as well, which came with a very short arm. This, I believe, is a more standard, you know, a commercial version, not necessarily for consumers, uh, because it does have the slightly longer arm, but it's missing some of the common features that a commercial or utility company version would have. We'll talk about some of those differences here in a second. But first, where in the world did I get this fixture? Well, I recently got this from my best friend's father. They took it down at their local business, and they saved it in the back, and well, now it's in my hands, which is absolutely awesome. They had two of these out back above their volleyball courts. One of them was taken down quite a long time ago, but the arm is still up there. And this secondary one, last time I was in town, was still up there and in an operation. As you can tell, obviously, being 250 watt mercury vapor, it was quite bright, but it also had a clear bulb in it. Very cool. It has since been replaced by an LED floodlight, which of course is more efficient than this, but I'm so happy that they were able to at least keep this fixture around until I could uh, ask if I could have it, so that's awesome. Before creating this video, I took a little bit of time to clean this fixture up. It was stored outside, so it had a little bit of water damage and, you know, leaves inside and things like that until I got my hands on it here. So I cleaned that up, brushed the rust off of the ballast, and this thing is a working charm. So let's go ahead and take a little bit of a closer look at it and the arm itself. Here's the arm that came with the fixture. It's a nice heavy one. I've seen these both in, I want to say like aluminum and steel like this. This is a, this has to be a steel one because it is incredibly heavy compared to the other ones that I have found. And addition to the fixture that we're taking a look at today, here is a Regent 175 watt mercury vapor area light. This also came off of their business. This one is dated October 6th of 1998 and it still works as quiet as ever. Now let's take a closer look at the fixture itself. We'll start at the top here with the photo cell because I do believe it is original. As you'll see in a bit, all these date codes seem to match up. We do have an 07 on the bottom of it here. It's a uh, Fisher Pierce. And I do have the front covered. It is quite yellowed, but even though it is old, it still functions. I'm surprised. I mean, usually you find older photo cells like this, and they're already day burning. Underneath, we have the photo cell socket itself. It does say General Electric on it. Maybe you can just make it out. Let's see your General Electric. It's a little dirty. I didn't have time to clean the whole thing up. Oh, that looks so much better, doesn't it? Now you can actually read it. Now, the interesting thing with these photo cells is you can pick them up or the socket, I should say, and you can rotate them. And I believe there's, I don't know if there's different pins underneath or something, unless not. So you can orient this in different directions. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it's supposed to do. I can't really get it to do it very much. So I picked it up and I turned it here. And now you can see it's locked into a different position. And now north is facing, you know, away instead of this direction. But you just kind of pick it up and rotate it, and then you can set it down where it has to go. And you'll see, once we take a look at the inside, there's kind of a spring-loaded washer uh, that takes care of all of that. And then naturally, you can just put your photo cell back on here. And twist it into place. There we go. One of the nice features with all the GE NEMA heads is they put a NEMA sticker on it. Obviously, we have a 25 here in blue. It's definitely seen better days being beaten on by the sun and the heat of the big ballast inside. But it's nice that it is at least still here. And, of course, we have the reflector refractor assembly itself. Now, you may have seen another video on my channel uh, taking a look at a 100-watt high-pressure sodium version of these. And that one was brand new in box when I found it. And we'll take a look, at least me, comparing those differences here. And one of the first ones is that the reflector refractor here, assembly, doesn't have a GE logo on it. 
So if we take this off, of course we can take our head out here and we'll set that aside and we'll just take a look at our assembly. Now what does tell me that this must be original is because we do have the bump here in the back which meets up with the back of the housing to kind of encapsulate all the wires. So that makes sense. It has to be original in that regard. But usually on the front here, you would find General Electric or something to that nature, and I don't see anything like that at all. I don't see it anywhere. Again, it's dirty. But it's missing, so I wonder if it's a consumer grade one then instead of a commercial one or if they did away with the General Electric branding on the refractor. And there's the inside, again with the bump to cover up the, the uh, ballast compartment a little bit better. And of course our latches which make it a NEMA head. Let's take a closer look at the inside now. First, we're greeted with the bulb, naturally. This is not the original bulb. It's actually a new old stock bulb, though. This is a Sylvania 250-watt deluxe white. I don't have any clear ones at the moment, so we have deluxe white. It would have been nice to have clear, because that's what originally was in it, but it didn't have its bulb anymore. Not sure why. Maybe it finally went out, but it was still bright as ever the last I saw it on. Okay. So we have our ceramic socket here, and we would have had an information tag here that is obviously long gone. Oh, but we can read something here. October of 07. 10 07. Well, that's cool. Can you see that? Let's see. Yeah, there you go. 10 07 is what it looks like to me. And that would match up with some of the other stuff that we're about to see here, too. Here is a close-up look at the ballast when I was cleaning it. Now, you can see here, stickers on the ballast indicate that this was made in 2007. Now, the interesting thing about that is I took a look at the catalogs online, at least the ones that I could find. I found one from 2003, 2001, and one of them from the 1980s. The 1980s catalog still had a 250-watt mercury vapor offering, both for commercial use and residential offerings. The 2001 and 2003 catalogs did away with the 250-watt mercury vapor offering altogether. It wasn't necessarily a, an option to write in uh, on their, their ordering sheet. It, at least the catalog that I found, it, it wasn't there at all. So... Was it gone for a while, and then they brought it back in 2007 for a little bit? I'm not sure. It's really odd, because maybe it's a special order fixture? I don't know. Hopefully somebody can help uh, figure out this rare offering here. Because, again, a 250-watt mercury vapor NEMA head in general is rare in and of itself. Okay, so looking more at the ballast here, as you can see, after uh, taking it out and cleaning it up, we just have some light surface rust on it. Not too bad. This was stored outside, and it did have some debris inside, so I cleaned it up uh, the best I could with the time I have here. And, of course, tested it, obviously, and it runs as silent as can be. You'll see that here in a little bit. Now, some other differences I want to point out, and one of them that you've probably already noticed, is there's no terminal block here. The 100 watt high pressure sodium version I have does have a terminal block. There's a terminal on either side for the positive and, and neutral or whatever. But it's absent here. I'm not sure if they did away with it towards 2007 or because it has such a big ballast inside that they couldn't, they didn't want to add it. It would push the socket out too far. I, I don't know. I'd have to look at my high-pressure sodium one, which I don't have here. I'm at my parents' house, and uh, com compare that. But the ballast inside is obviously quite large uh, for this housing. Deep inside, we can see our photocell socket, and you can kind of see that unique washer that it has with some locking ends on it to kind of rotate it however you'd like. You just got to be careful because these wires are here. You don't want to twist them up too much. Now, these wires are what it came with. And it is directly wired, the hot there to the hot on the photocell, and the neutral to a 
terminal, or I think it's this, this here, um, to put all the neutrals together. So, again, it must not have ever had a terminal block if these wires are permanently wired to the, the offerings here. Very interesting. Too bad we can't get much information off of the sticker anymore, but it was fun to at least see uh, the date code of 10-07. Maybe you can kind of see it there in the corner. It's very hard to see right in the center of your screen. With all that being said, try to get some other close-up looks here. We do have terminals on the ballast itself, obviously, so you can you know, repair things as needed. And the wires are in pretty good shape. Obviously, they've, uh, you know, suffered some heat from the incredibly hot bulb. But other than that, it's in really good shape. Now, this could be fitted, I do believe, for a one and a quarter inch pipe or a two inch pipe. You just flip around the um, kind of clamp here. This is for the one and a quarter, and then this would be for the two inch, if I'm not mistaken. So, there is our close-up look at the inside of the head. I'm going to put the bulb back in. We'll put the refractor back on, and let's turn this thing on. Now, unfortunately, being away from home, I don't have all the typical testing equipment to test this, such as the kilowatt meter and the lux meter and the spectrometer. But we're going to go ahead and turn this thing on anyway. I also don't have a tripod, really. So let's turn it on here. Three, two, one. Isn't that pretty? Yes, very, very pretty. Okay, I'm going to just kind of put it over like this for a second because, you know, let's always get a good thumbnail image. There you go. Okay, it's not the most recommended thing to do this, but I'm going to turn it on its side while it is on. We're going to be very careful with it so that you can see the inside. There we go. Look at that beautiful mercury vapor bulb. Now, I have a six foot slim line on the ceiling and that's making more buzzing than this fixture actually. But if I put the camera in here, maybe you can get a better here. It's, it's incredibly quiet. It's in wonderful condition for its age. Again, it just needs a cleanup. But an absolutely beautiful fixture. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of time here. And we'll take a look at it at full brightness. So being an HX style ballast, this didn't take long to warm up at all. Just a couple minutes and we're already at full brightness here. Quiet as can be. Let me go ahead and turn off the noisy light on the ceiling. Yeah, this thing is silent. How beautiful is that? Very, very cool. A little turning of the camera here so you can see what it would look like if it was actually sitting the right direction. And now we're going to rotate your world. And let's get some cool down. We can at least do that. Beautiful. Okay. Well, there is, be very careful with this here, our GE201SA 250 watt mercury vapor area light. How cool is that? We'll definitely have to do a video in the future. We'll, we'll get the arm on it and uh, we'll test it more appropriately. But for the time being, I wanted to share this with all of you. As always, I do hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, be sure to give it a like down below and leave a comment. I do enjoy reading all of your comments. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more great videos like this one. Also check out my secondary channel, Mercove and subscribe over there for more behind the scenes and alternative content. Of course, check out the other videos here on this screen. And as always, thank you very much for watching.